everybody. Lord Tremendous here, and I got another book review here for you. This one is The Steins, and it's written by James D. Lee. It is a horror slash romance, and it was published back in, I believe, October of 2020. It's 176 pages, so it's not too bad of a read. I was able to knock it out in a couple of days, and uh, yeah, here's the review, so let's get to it. So this is a spoiler-free review part of the uh, review, and uh, I'm going to go through everything. I'm going to try to give like a, a 10,000-foot overview of the story and everything like that. I'm not going to try to get into any details. I don't want to get too deep. I'll probably flirt with a few small spoilers, and I apologize for that, but nothing that's going to ruin the story for you. So if you do want to check it out, by all means, you can find it uh, online. Uh, just Google into Steins, be able to find it no problem whatsoever. Uh, so the main character's name is Mary Jane Stein, and the plot basically is her parents are killed, turns out that she's royalty from a foreign land, they eventually come and get her, it turns out they're vampires, werewolves, ghouls, what have you, supernatural stuff, and she's now a princess, and she's got to uh, fix up Boldovia, or whatever the name of the place is that she's going to, and uh, start a life there. It's... It's a little Princess Diaries, but without all the, the incompetence. And don't ask how I know that. <laughs> uh, the cover, uh, real quick, the cover, as you can see, is gorgeous. Uh, it's wonderfully put together. If you're walking through a bookstore and you're looking for a horror flick or something like that, or some sort of horror story type of thing, this would catch your attention. Absolutely. It's a beautiful cover. I love everything about it. The colors, the silhouettes, the castle, the moon. This is a great cover. This is the quality you should strive for when making a cover for your book. I got zero complaints about that. The editing is rough. Uh, it feels like either uh, the author did not get an editor or got a very bad one. This book needs an editor bad. There's a lot of run-on sentences. There's a lot of punctuation. There's a lot of misspellings. There's just a lot of things that an editor would find and correct. Even even just basic editing knowledge, it's, it's painful. Uh, the use of the word and uh, you'll see it between 12 and 24 times a page, and the pages are not that big. It's frustrating. It's aggravating. I'm, I'm just trying to be honest. You know, For example, she picked up the shirt from the dresser, and then her jeans from the dresser, and then her necklace from the dresser, and then she opened the drawer on the dresser and picked out her socks from the dresser drawer, and then closed the dresser drawer, and then took the socks from her hand and placed them on top of the dresser so she could lean over and pick up her shoes from next to the dresser and then put them on. I'm not exaggerating, okay? <laughs> it's, it's, it's like that, and an editor would have picked that up and corrected that. So this is just a wonderful reason, a wonderful uh, example of why getting an editor, no matter how good of a writer you think you are, always, always, always get an editor because this book suffers because it did not have one. Uh, also, the story flow is, is broken. Uh, I don't mind telling you. There's a lot of issues with transitions. Uh, you'll get perspective shifts sometimes mid-sentence. Uh, you'll be talking, you know, uh, the lawyer over here said this, and then all of a sudden it's Mary's perspective. Or the paragraph will end, uh, you know, with like a, you know, not even like a, a definitive ending or anything like that. It's just that paragraph is over and you're shifting to the next one. And between that paragraph and the very next one, there four months have passed and now all of a sudden you've got a whole different you're, you're from a perspective from a character you might not have even been introduced to before there's at a minimum at a minimum you would put the little asterisks in between the the paragraphs in order to signal signal to the reader that something has changed there's going to be a shift in tempo in time something and there's nothing like that the the, the transition just happens it's abrupt it's jarring it's confusing and it happens often throughout the book uh, at one point like the first one is uh right after her her parents are killed and uh she's waiting for something uh she they, they get the fact they get the idea that you know her uh her, her royal family members are going to come get her it that's the end of a paragraph and then the very next paragraph is four months later you know she's at a she's at a court hearing and it's like what just happened 
Why did that happen? It's like getting punched in the face by a frying pan. You're not expecting it. It's not good. The flow is bad. There's a lot of transitions like that throughout the story. Those are the bigger ones. The smaller ones are just going back and forth between the characters. The transitions are, are abrupt. They're jarring. They're not well done. And it's real easy to get confused. I, I had to go back and reread some stuff quite often because I would get just lost sometimes. <laughs> like, who whose perspective is this? What's happening? My notes are a, a tangled mess of arrows pointing from one idea to the next. It's a little frustrating. A little frustrating. So the pros of this book is that, like I said, the cover art is fantastic. It really is. Like I said, if you're going to design your cover, this is the quality that you're looking for. Really try to strive to meet or beat this quality of a cover because it's, it's perfect. Uh, some of the combat scenes are good. Um, and that's about the best I can say about the combat scenes. Mary, is, Mary Jade is actually short for Mary Sue. Uh, but we'll get into that in just a second. But I do like some of the action scenes. It was easy to lose myself in them and imagine what was actually happening. Even if it was a little, oh, what's the word I want to use? Uh, convenient, easy, no real threat, no real danger. But the, the, the scenes themselves are well described and well laid out. I did enjoy some of the combat scenes. And it's under 200 pages. So for a book like this, a story like this, it's a short read. So that's kind of nice too. You can sit down and knock it out in a day or two. Cons list is a little bit longer. And like I said, I've already touched on this. Definitely is a proofreader to just go through and for continuity and, and some of the errors and some of the way that things are described. It's it's difficult. It's It's a bad story flow. Uh, definitely needs an editor, and I think I've beaten that horse to death. Uh, the transitions as well, like I said, are terrible, and I'm not going to rehash that because I already did. But like I hinted towards the, in the pros, Mary is aptly named. She is a Mary Sue. She's good at everything. She's a 17-year-old bombshell gorgeous person that's incredibly intelligent and knows everything. I'll get more into that, more detail to, more detail to that in the spoiler-rich review. But in this one, it's just every challenge that comes up isn't a challenge because she's already beaten it. At no point is she ever you know, like stopped or stumped or have an issue. In fact, at one point in the story, she preemptively goes and, and meets somebody because she feels this individual for no other reason than a stereotype that they'll be able to help her pass a history class. It's painful. Like things could not go easier for her if she was, if, if somebody was literally paving the way it's not interesting. It's not fun. It kind of kills the character because she doesn't have any challenge. She's, she's, everything is fixed. Everything is no problem. Oh, look at that. Uh, there's a fire and magically the fire is gone. It's, it's literally that level of Mary Sue and it, it's, it's aggravating. Uh, everyone loves her. Everyone loves her and there's no justifiable reason for it. She does not run into anyone that dislikes her. And if they do, they are such a small part of the story. They don't do anything to affect her. And at the very end, when a organization does try to go after them, they're so incredibly inept. It's, it would be like, I don't know, a grade school baseball team going up against a major league baseball team. It's not even a contest. It's not even a, a, a question of who's going to win. Uh, she's literally a multi-billionaire, and it doesn't explain why. Money solves everything. Every issue that comes up, she just throws money at it. Literally writes a $14.5 billion check to fix a, a political problem. I'm not exaggerating. I'm not exaggerating. There's no challenge for this person at all. Mary is able to either throw money at the situation, cute her way out of the situation, or sleep her way, although there is no sex in the book, but she's able to use her sexual prowess to get people to do what she wants. Her own cousin, first cousin, is one of the first things he says about her is she's smoking hot, which is creepy. Pretty creepy, not going to lie. Had to, had to kind of wash my eyes with soap after that one. Uh, you don't really meet any bad guys. Like, you don't meet an antagonist or anything like that until, like, the last 20 or 30 pages of the book. Most of the book is just 
her being awesome, like able to overcome anything with minimal effort, like uh, it is, she's she might as well be God. It's it's a little ridiculous. Uh, people cheer for her. There's a court hearing where the CPS people are trying to figure out where she's supposed to go, which is a little ridiculous. But, you know, it's a book with vampires and werewolves, so it's not the worst thing you have to stretch your imagination for. But in in there's there's like the whole town of people there like cramming this courtroom and they're cheering her and jeering at the CPS people. And then there's applause afterwards. Like it's some horrible B rated movie. It's like, none of that's happened. None of this is a book based in modern time reality. None of that happens. None of that at all. The judge loves her like a daughter, which he should recuse himself. But again, book with werewolves and vampires not the hardest thing for you to you know suspend your disbelief for but it's just there's there's zero zero conflict everybody loves this chick for no justification i mean I, she's not a bad person or anything like that she's not rude or anything but it's just nobody is that well liked okay <laughs> so it's just really weird and at the very end a little spoiler here they're super elite monster hunters okay they're 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 an organization that all other governments all over the world supposedly buy special operations equipment from and but their real operation this is the way the book describes it is as monster hunters they're a super elite top of the line you know at the ragged edge of of modern design monster hunters using the most advanced sophisticated spec ops stuff that they have out there and when they go up against her and her family there is there is advanced as a brand new like 13 and under paintball squad what <laughs> i mean it is so ridiculous there's just zero zero threat zero threat the entire time i really thought towards the end that these monster hunters were gonna be like a challenge like a real difficult problem for her. no no not at all a handful of people on her team die but they're all extras they're all npcs they're not real main characters or anything like that the only main character that does get hurt literally gets staked in the chest is fine is fine because in my opinion plot armor the author didn't want that particular character to die shouldn't have written it like that but you know we can get into that argument on in the comment section all you'd like read the book happily have a discussion with you and like i said again i'm not going to beat this horse but there's a terrible constant use of the word and i'm serious like 10 to 20 times a page if there's a lot there's a lot so, unfortunately, my overall rating for this book is going to be one star out of five. It's not personal or anything like that, but I just, I I almost think that this book is, I'm not the target demographic. It, it felt, it was presented to me by the author as a horror book, and I looked it up online, and it's kind of a horror slash romance novel. That's fine. It's supposed to be more horror based. Honestly, I didn't get the romance part of it. There's a little bit, uh, you know, but it's very g-rated there there's really i mean she gets into a relationship with a guy and of course fixes him but it was just the way it was designed the way it was that way it was put together the innocence almost ignorance of it in my opinion it, it felt more like a young adult or maybe a teen book like maybe a, a young teenage girl would like this or something like that and that's not an insult that's not an insult but i don't know if you could tell or not i'm not a young teenage girl so i really i i wonder if maybe the author wrote this with the intent of it being for a more adult audience but really stumbled upon something that i i believe that a, a young teenage girl would really really enjoy uh it, it's that that fantasy, that power trip and stuff like that, uh, you know, your royalty, you're a multi-billionaire, everything you do is perfect without any kind of real effort, there's no challenge, everyone loves you, I mean, you see, where I'm, you see what I'm cooking here, you see what I'm trying to throw your way, but for an individual like me and stuff like that, I, it's, it's not going to be entertaining, it's not going to be good, it's not going to be interesting, and with the editing and proofreading and the run-on sentences and the story flow and the transitions and the Mary Sue aspect of it I just didn't enjoy it I didn't like it and uh it was it's it's got a just a 
a, a ton of other problems just even outside of the fact that it's not i might not be the target audience for this particular book with all the other technical writing and formatting errors it just it's a one star out of five and i'm really sorry to say it so here's the spoiler filled review this is where i can really get into it so if you do not like spoilers and you want to read this book without any further spoilers or anything like that please go and do it please shut off the video right now go check out this book and come back afterwards you can re you can listen to this part and then we can hash it out in the comment section i love having conversations about this stuff in the comment sections please feel free so okay if you're still here we're going to get started with some spoilers. <laughs> so Mary, her parents get killed. Th their heads literally get cut off. And uh, they, they, the, the cops never find the heads. The cops never find the assassins. They never find anything. The cops are useless in this little town in Mississippi. Uh, Mary runs in, uh, to, you know, called to her house. Her parents are dead. The sheriff tells her exactly what happened, which I wonder about that, how that would really go down. But maybe, maybe, sure. But Mary is basically they she she finds a letter and a key that unlocks something in the back of a clock. A little convenient, but it is what it is. Going for that mystery, going for that little awe-inspiring thing, showing that Mary's a demigod. Yeah, okay, sure, whatever. Uh, turns out they find this letter, and the letter is like, hey, it's from her dead dad, and it's like, hey, if you're reading this, I'm dead. The letter is actually screwed up. Again, an editor and a proofreader would have caught this, but the letter is at first addressed to her mom and her and then by the second sentence of the letter it's all written out to mary like the dad knew what was going to happen in the story and and catered that letter exactly to that almost like he, he knew how he was going to die and stuff but at first he addressed it to both her and her mom it, it again an editor or proofreader would have caught that and this could have been caught before it was put into uh, print but i digress anyway Turns out she's a princess from this land called Boldovia. Her dad was a prince, and you never really find out why he left Boldovia to come to America. He just did and she also called you know my dad was a protector of the poor and the and the oppressed and and he and he went out of his way to do everything you never find out if that's true or if that's just some sort of weird PTSD like I don't know a coping mechanism that she comes up with it's just it's a trope. I mean, my dad was 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 a was a fighter of truth, justice, and the American way, and blah blah blah. I, I would almost like to see because there is a part two and part three to this book. I would love to see that her father is actually some sort of drug lord or something crazy like that because it's just her 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 mother's never really even mentioned. Her mother was you know it was great that she carried me around in her womb for nine months, but dad dad's where it's at it was weird it was weird <laughs> but she's a princess she gets picked up uh, four months after her parents die in a really weird court case where the cps people are trying to get her into foster care when she's 17 and a half years old and has been living with the sheriff because her parents were friends with the sheriff uh for the past four months and now all of a sudden cps is like well maybe we should throw her in foster care for six months and then when she turns 18 cut her loose CPS would not act like that. I, again, it's a vampire werewolf story. It's not hard to suspend your disbelief in this crazy courtroom case. But the problem I had is before it all starts, the judge is so not impartial. He's so, like, attached to Mary, like, because everybody is. In this court case, like, where with the CPS and everything like that, they filled the room. The townspeople have filled the room, and there's no justification for it. It's just boom you're in the court case and everybody loves mary and uh yeah she people are literally cheering and booing and applauding and hugging her like she's a saint <laughs> it's like who is this chick none of this is earned none of this is justified it's just i guess the npcs know that she's a she's the mary sue of the story and without her all of them just get erased so okay when i think about it like that it makes sense but <laughs> it's it's no good it's no good from a storytelling position because none of that's earned it doesn't make any sense why does everybody love her she's done nothing as far as you know to earn any of this she, she doesn't even seem to have a job nothing she's just been staying with the, the sheriff and her parents were murdered I don't, I don't, I'm not following. And I reread that part a couple of times because I had to, but it was just, I, I don't understand it. So she gets flown over to the Boldovia in a, in a luxury jet with a full bath and, and full bed in it. Yep. And she takes a bath in it and everything. Again, 
vampire werewolf, suspending disbelief, sure. There's a full bath and full bed on a little personal uh, private jet. Whatever, we'll go with that. She gets to Moldovia, and of course, everything goes smooth. She she gets caught on a train. For some reason, a train ride takes four hours in this country. You never really find out how big it is. But when you do know that it's going through like a, 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 a repression, people are destitute, the country's not doing well, you get the feeling it's like a second, maybe third world country, it, although it never really says or at least that's the way the author tries to portray it, because when she gets to the to the manor where where the baron and the count and the and the mayor and all of them are, that greeter and all this stuff, everybody's super rich, everybody's well dressed, everybody's jacked, you know, everybody's gorgeous, and uh, you know, well dressed. There's literal uh, Rolls Royces and stuff like that, high end cars. The author is a car person. There's a lot of references to some really nice cars. That being said, there's something called a rat car or something like that. I don't remember exactly what it's called, but they're like run-down, cheap vehicles that the 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 cousin and his pack, their werewolves, they they run around like greasers, literally slick back hair, leather jackets, blue jeans, and they have their little rat cars or whatever. I can't remember what they're called. Uh, but it, they're just kind of like run down older vehicles for some reason. Meanwhile, the rest of them are driving around in Rolls Royces and Bentleys, not exaggerating. So whatever, that, it's interesting, uh, but everybody loves her. Everybody loves her. Nobody's jealous that this girl from America that they don't know is coming here and is going to take a position of power as a princess in their country. And, and, that's weird to me. That seemed like a beautiful place to add a little bit of, little bit of conflict, a little bit of an antagonist, a little bit of an insider threat. But no, no, not only does everybody love her, everybody loves her like she's the long lost chosen one. And she is, but they don't know that yet. <laughs> you know? Even her cousin, first cousin cousin tells tells her mom at one point or tells his mom oh my god i didn't know how gorgeous she was gonna be she's smoking hot mom that's super creepy that's first cousin cousin that mm -mm, no 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 uh, again a good proofreader would have caught that and raised the flag like why'd you put that that's that's kind of awful but uh if your cousin's talking to you like that please please stop <laughs> That family tree is supposed to branch. But anyway, uh, another problem with Mary is she's good at everything. So she, she settles down, and within three days of being in Baldovia, the Count loves her. The Count is this eight-foot-tall beast of a vampire. He's hundreds of years old. Oh, and by the way, she knows everyone's a vampire, a werewolf, a ghoul, all those supernatural things, because she found her dad's diary that's hundreds of years old. It was in the clock. That was not in the book. I think that's a, a mistake, a plot hole in the book, because she's like, oh, I found this diary in the clock with the note. No, she didn't. I went back and checked multiple times. It's not in there. That diary comes out of thin air. So the Count has been looking for this diary for 150 years, and she just literally throws it at, into his lap. And that makes him the golden child. Like, there's no other issue. The Count went from this standoffish, brute, angry, stereotypical vampire to, I love this girl more than I love my own wife. I'm not exaggerating. And yeah, she becomes the most precious thing in his life because of this flippin' diary. Again, she's good at everything. Three days of living there. And so the Count tells her, I've always wanted to usher my uh, country into a, into a golden age and fix everything up and make everything good. But I've had to wait for someone to help me do it. He's got servants. He's got land. He's got money. But for some reason, he had to wait for her to show up in order to start fixing the country. So get this. He shows her her bank account. Her dad, before he went to America, left billions, with a B, billions of dollars in the Baldovia banks, okay? The federal government banks of Baldovia. You know, the banks that her uncle, the Count, controls. He knew this money was in there. She didn't. She had no idea. Literally tens of billions of dollars are in this account. 
and he wanted to find a way to fix up his country, but never had enough money, never could do it, had to wait for someone to come and, and help him out in the country that he controls and the banking system that he controls. She shows up, he gives her all the money in the bank account, and what does this 17-year-old American Southern girl do? What any other American 17-year-old girl would do. She uses that billions of dollars not to buy stuff for herself, but to fix up the town. She literally starts throwing money at the problems. I'm not making this up. She writes checks First check she writes is for $90 million to fix up the downtown area, the roads, the shops. And then she pays every shop owner uh, like a week's salary or a week's profits or whatever. How, how she mathematized that friggin' amount, it, it never explains. But there's just blank checks or written checks out to every shop owner with how much money they might lose due to the time of construction. So nobody loses any money or anything like that out of her own bank account because she's literally got infinity money. Not only that, but she writes these checks the night before and the next morning, the, the, re the recession is over. It's done. Construction workers, skilled labor, heavy machinery, supplies, everything that they need is not only there, but the construction crews are already working it. The next morning, not even 12 hours later, everything, the whole town is being redesigned, refixed up and everything like that because she wrote a check. Wow, that was the most difficult thing to believe in the whole story. <laughs> I'm sorry. Infrastructure moving that fast, finding labor in a recession-filled town, country like that? No, that's where it lost me. I'm sorry. But of course, the mayor has no idea what's going on. The chief of police has no idea what's going on. They're running around all the construction trying to figure out who's doing all this. We can't afford this. Who authorized this? And it just so happens the main foreman of all these jobs walks up to the mayor because he's, he's within hearing range, apparently. Apparently, and shows him the receipt and the cash check from Mary. Not only did she pay for all this and authorize all this, Princess Mary, but uh, she paid for it out of her own money, her infinite money supply. So it's not even coming from taxpayers, which you got to ask the question, what the hell is the taxpayer's money going to, right? But that's never answered either. So yeah, yeah, just Mary and her infinite piggy bank. She does eventually go out with her cousin's friends, her cousin and her friends to, uh, or her cousin's friends anyway, to to shop and buy some you know clothes in in Moldovia because she could have gone to one of the bigger stores or whatever but she's gonna shop local you know all the stores that are closed down because of construction she's still able to shop there because you know plot holes anyway uh so she goes in there and she of course she finds designer dresses clothes shoes you know, shit that fits her no problem and uh pays just under a grand for it to these I mean yeah it's it's silly. It's silly. Uh, and, and people just love her for it. People just absolutely love her for it. They fall over themselves to like bow down at her feet because she's Aphrodite. Uh, her parents' death does not come up again until the very end of the book, like the last five pages of the book. She's not upset. She doesn't have nightmares, no PTSD, no stress, no trauma. Yeah, my parents were killed. Their heads were cut off. But, you know, red dress. I'm good. <laughs> Wow. She moved from the only place she's ever known her entire life to Baldovia, what arguably was a third world country. Uh, and, and no, she's good. She's good. No problem. No issue. No culture shock. In fact, everyone in Baldovia uses in or speaks English and uses American slang. And you. Oh, yeah. No problem whatsoever. None. Zero. The biggest culture shock happens to the Baldovians when she gets an American made car shipped in. Yep. Uh, the vampire element is kind of a backdrop. It doesn't really factor in at all. Uh, sunlight doesn't seem to be a factor. Sometimes they like to be in the dark, but nothing is really stressful or difficult. She's not a vampire or anything like that. She doesn't seem to want to become one or anything, but she is like a weird demonic goddess when she wants to be. She has some dreams with a cat and uh, a couple of like lesser gods kind of talk to her once 
or twice in a dream and suddenly when she's threatened she becomes a whirling dervish of demonic death it's it's never really explained and when she has to fight or when she has to defend herself people just end up broken by her but you know not dead because she's not a killer it's it's very weird uh but yeah the supernatural stuff is kind of a backdrop to her basically being a princess and her shopping sprees and her fixing up of the town by writing checks uh the dialogue is stilted uh there's no real emotion in any of it everybody talks the same there's no difference of dialect or anything like that uh the closest that you get to any kind of diversity when it comes to the, to the language is she'll change her her accent from a southern accent to a baldovian accent to a what's described as a strong and powerful political woman it, it's very weird uh it's almost like she's got multiple personalities maybe that's what the author's going for but i i, I it's not it's not written out it's not described yet like I said, needs a proofreader, needs an editor. I'm not going to keep beating that dead horse. But the biggest problem, one of the biggest problems is Mary and Ray Palpatine could be the exact same person. They just, there's no issues that they run into that they can't easily surpass. I mean, super easily. And because of all that, unfortunately, yes, like I said before, this is a hard one out of five star story. Uh, one of my biggest complaints is when you find there's no antagonist, there's no enemy, there's no there's nobody that bothers her. Parliament in another part of the country uh, is like they don't like her. And they try to say that basically uh, the Baldovia is in debt to them like twelve billion dollars and they're going to foreclose on on the country or something along those lines and she does this oprah winfrey thing where she's like uh you know open that and you know mr prime minister open that letter in front of you with like the media and stuff like, it's supposed to be this big gotcha moment and he opens up this letter and it's a certified check for 14 and a half billion dollars out of her own money of course because like i said she's got infinite money and it's never fully explained where that money comes from it's not tax money because the author goes out of his way to say multiple times that you know oh the taxes aren't even being touched she's paying for it out of her own pocket which is just ridiculous uh but yeah i'm not exaggerating she writes a certified check for 14 and a half billion dollars in order to fix her problem with parliament so yeah i guess if uh uh, uh anakin and padme had 14 and a half billion you know galactic credits uh i guess i guess darth vader never would have happened I'm, I'm just it's there's no hardship there's no issue there's no challenge there's no obstacles everything is easily handled and it super frustrating because that's not a good story that's not a good story because it's the same as i walked from from one end of my block to the other i used the sidewalk i didn't have to cross the street and then i went turn around and i went home that's not that's the story i mean there's there's no hardship there's no obstacles it was something i was easily able to do uh i guess like i could say well at one point there was something on the ground looked like a bird pooped on the ground so i walked around it it was no problem i mean that is as difficult of the obstacles that she runs into i kid you not her boyfriend is this 18 year old geek i mean he's your stereotypical geek he's got messy hair he's got glasses and he's playing around on his laptop she falls she goes to him because she knows that this nerd is going to be able to help her pass her history class because that's the only weakness she has is she's not good at history because she doesn't know Baldovia history that's it everything else she's awesome at book literally says it math science english whatever got it nailed it boom history of Baldovia gonna have to find the nerdy guy to help me out and of course she does a makeover on him gets him a haircut removes the glasses changes his clothes and he's brad pitt i mean come on come on so yeah yeah uh the only time you run into an antagonist is when at the very like 20 page last 20 pages of the book this uh super elite monster hunter team comes after her they send like five uh units six units of four guys each to go and take her out her her but her, her boyfriend at this point uh is a hacker 
uh, he's 18, 19 years old, and he literally hacks this super elite special ops room. No problem. They don't even notice it, and they're watching. They know they're coming. They know they're coming, and they don't do anything about it. They just they send the werewolves out, which is uh, her cousin and his pack, and a couple of them die. But they didn't have names until that scene. That's how insignificant their deaths are. The most significant death we get is her handmaiden, Catherine. She dies because one guy throws a knife at her, but she's a ghoul. So I don't understand how this knife stabbing her in the chest was going to kill her because before, uh, like two pages before her death, they say they see ghouls on their on their night vision. And they see that they're colder than a normal person would be. So they're ghouls. So bullets wouldn't have any effect on them. But this little throwing knife that a guy hits this girl in the chest with, yep, she's going to die. And she gets the, the bloody, you know... <laughs> don't let me go death which is just ridiculous and then of course mary does her i'm a demonic psychopath thing kills everything and it's like why didn't you lead with that why did why did two werewolves and a ghoul have to die like they they literally knew what plane they were landing in in their country and they they saw the tickets and everything like that they had helicopters in their country they control the country how the hell did they get helicopters without their permission? They could have blown them up in the helicopters. But no, we have to have the stupidest fight scene at the end of this book with zero risk because you knew there was going to be no issue whatsoever. There was zero tension, zero suspension, zero concern because you knew if anybody was going to die, it was either going to be the super elite monster hunters that have been doing it for decades or some insignificant NPC who only got a name two seconds before they died ridiculous ridiculous and and uh, it yeah it was an aggravating read a little bit i do still wonder if this is some sort of coming of age or young adult book and i'm just not the target demographic but i was very clear on the genres that i look for and the ones that i don't want to have submitted to me this was presented to me as a horror story i found out later that it had some romance although i i didn't see the romance in it yeah there's there's a relationship but that's about it and yeah, uh, very weird. One star out of five. I did not like this book. And that's the end of this review. I hope you enjoyed it. I really hate doing these uh, reviews where I have to give a one or two star review because I, it, I'm not trying to attack the author. I'm not trying to be cruel. I know it comes off that way. I know it sounds like it. And yes, I am aggravated. I am upset because I, I want the story to be better i want it to be as good as it can be and i feel like this one isn't and i feel like it's because they're taking shortcuts uh so ugh. but I, I try to keep up with the integrity i try not to pull any punches and i try to be honest and obviously with 40 minute video <laughs> i think i think i've definitely kept my end of the bargain uh so this is a tremendous story e-shelf uh all my five out of five star review books will be here right now just my books are on here and yes i'm biased so please check out my books and if you disagree uh let me know in the comment section i'll happily have a conversation about that as well or shoot me an email have a discussion with anybody about anything about any time when it comes to books weirdos <laughs> but that's it uh i hope you enjoyed this if you have any questions concerns comments or complaints feel free to put them in the comments section below and as always thanks